at the moment. He try the shot. Oh my goodness me! Have you ever seen anything like it? And it's another classic. Hello everyone, I'm Joe Prince Wright, and welcome to the latest edition of the breakdown as we focus on some of the top plays from across the Premier League during match week 11. Love digging a bit deeper with you guys to analyze these incredible plays. So let's kick off the breakdown this week. Okay, the first plays or plays we're gonna focus on the breakdown this week is West Ham's dominance from set pieces as it drove them to victory against Liverpool. And I wanna pay particular attention to Mikel Antonio, who really upset Allison and was an absolute pest for Liverpool as the Hammers recorded a massive, massive win at the London Stadium. The big lads are forward. Don't ignore Suchek by the penalty area. Zoom is excellent in these conditions as well. And it's gone through the hands of Allison and into the back of the net. Not four minutes on the clock and West Ham United lead. But is the flag been raised? No, it hasn't. The goal stands. Oh, Bono has got a flick on it through Allison's hands into the net. To the back post this time, 3-1. Kurt Zuma. Joy for David Boys. Joy for Hammers fans everywhere. What a second half performance this is. Okay then, since David Moyes returned to West Ham, they are the best team in the Premier League at scoring goals from set pieces by a long, long distance. So they're doing something very well there. The coaching staff work really hard with the Hammers to uh, be very inventive and creative from these set piece situations. And they showcased all of that against Liverpool. So if we play the clip here for the first goal, uh, a lot of controversy around this. Should it have been a goal? VAR had a good look at it, but ball comes in, Alisson misses it. And I want to focus here on the role of Mikel Antonio. Just stop it here. You can see right here as the ball's coming in, he's just stood right in front of Alisson. Alisson's got his hand on his back. He's just putting him off. He's not moving anywhere, not doing anything wrong. But Antonio just stands there. There's no foul there whatsoever. It's a good goal. Uh, and Liverpool just didn't learn their lesson throughout the games. They kept doing the same things. And Jurgen Klopp was complaining about the referees, about decisions. But there really wasn't anything wrong that Antonio did here. As the ball went straight in, it was given as an Alisson own goal. But this is all about Mikel Antonio just occupying that space in front of Alisson, making it uncomfortable. Nobody's picking him up. And Alisson just, yeah, it really unnerved him. So if we then play the clip for the second set piece goal for West Ham in this game, you could stop it here as the ball comes in. Who's that there on the goal line, right in the middle of the goal? It's Antonio, again. Uh, he was causing a nuisance. Allison couldn't get around him, reacted late, and then Kurt Zuma was there uh, to head in at the back stick and send the London Stadium wild. So simply by focusing on where Liverpool had some weak points and set these situations and putting Antonio in on the goalkeeper, realizing there's a weakness there for, for Allison not being used to having players around him, it made a huge difference. And uh, yeah, West Ham, Third in the Premier League table after that shock win against Liverpool. Liverpool's first defeat of the season. They move above Jurgen Klopp's side. And those small margins really are making a difference right now for David Moyes' side. So the Hammers are happy. David Moyes is smiling and very happy. Look at that smile. You just absolutely incredible scenes there in East London. And West Ham, they could be the surprise package this season. And look out for them on set pieces because they do something very different in each game. In this game, it was all about Antonio uh, unnerving Allison, And that was the key to West Ham's win against Liverpool. The next play on the breakdown we're going to focus on is Man City's fullbacks dazzling as City beat United easily. I mean, they absolutely battered them, let's be honest as Jao Cancelo and Carl Walker were both involved on the first City goal, and this set the tone for a dominant display from Pep Guardiola's side. Let's play the clip. Well, we did excellently in a very tight situation. Jesus. Here's Walker. It's an excellent cross. Gundogan. Silva, Bernardo Silva inches away from it. Lindelof did excellently at the back post. Cancelo again. Oh, it's an own goal. It's a nightmare for Eric Bailly. In for the injured Rafael Varane in the seventh minute. And he's scored an own goal. It's his first Premier League appearance of the season. And it started horribly. OK, so we know that City are good, but they totally dismantled United at Old Trafford. 2-0 victory, could have been 5 or 6. And if we play the clip here for the first goal, you can see, stop it here. When Carl Walker whips it into the box, look how stretched his back three or back five of Manchester United is. 
I mean, you can see it there. One, two, three, four Man City players against one, two, three, four Man United players. So they got a 4v4 situation and they're whipping the ball into the box. I mean, it's so clever from Guardiola. He's gone man to man. He had the, the false nine with De Bruyne and Foden and Gabriel Jesus just floating around in attack. Totally bamboozled United's defenders. Didn't know where to go. The fullbacks didn't know where to go wide to shut down City's fullbacks. And the wing back situation, instead of a 3 5 2, it turned to a 5 3 2 for United. And he just couldn't get out all game long. So we play this clip on. Obviously, the ball comes in. Somehow, City don't score. It gets half cleared. And when the ball comes out to Jao Cancelo in the left back spot, stop it here. Look how much space he has around him there. No pressure whatsoever. He's allowed uh, Bruno Fernandes, is just, he's not comfortable defending. Great going forward, but not comfortable uh, back in his own final third. Play the clip here. When Cancelo puts onto his left, you can see once again, one, two, three, four Man City players against four Manchester United players. Eric Bailly ends up shanking it into his own net for an own goal. But a couple of City players could have tapped that in as well behind him. And United, as I said, just didn't know how to handle City's fullbacks because Walker and Cancelo, they were joining the attack. And when they got their head up, there was nobody in front of them because Luke Shaw and Wan Bissaka, the wingbacks to United, especially in the first half before they changed formation, they didn't know whether to get out to them to close them or, or stand off them. Centre back was being dragged across and out of position. And that meant Foden, De Bruyne, and Jesus just had a field day picking those little gaps. So Cancelo in particular was absolutely sensational. He whipped in the ball to City's second goal as well. He's been absolute class this season. And this is a masterclass from Manchester City on how to keep the ball in the fridge is what Pep Guardiola said. They had it in the freezer, basically. They had it the entire game. Man United couldn't get hold of it, couldn't work out City's attackers. But the fullbacks, that was key to City's dominance against Manchester United. So take a bow, Jao Cancelo and Carl Walker, two great displays from the Man City left back and right back. Okay, now we'll focus on Crystal Palace's forwards causing havoc, which did all game for Palace against Wolverhampton Wanderers. And we saw it particularly in this move for the second goal as a red hot Conor Gallagher sealed the win for Patrick Vieira's informed side. We'd love to keep him beyond the end of the season. A lot of them think perhaps that's unlikely to happen. Very much a Chelsea boy. It's in the family. He's been there since he was six. And he's certainly enjoying his football. And here's Conor Gallagher. Let's get the shot in. It's deflected. And he scores. Surely now they are on their way to all three points against Wolverhampton Wanderers. As I mentioned then, it was the forwards of Palace who really set the tone for this dominant display against Wolves. It should have won by more than the 2-0 scoreline in the end. But all game long, Christian Benteke and Odson Edward just caused Wolves so many problems. They were physical, making runs in behind, moving themselves out to the flanks and just finding little pockets of space to operate in. And we can see it on this second goal. If we play the clip here, not the most beautiful goal you'll ever see in the history of football. But Wolves just couldn't handle the presence, so the ball gets clipped in. Obviously, the header comes down here from Benteke. He doesn't even get on the end of it. He, he's just there. His presence puts off the Wolves' defence. It's a poor defensive header. But then look who's there. Conor Gallagher, the man of the moment. they to pick it up. Couple of touches. Deflected effort. As I said, not the most beautiful goal you'll ever see. When the ball's in the air, and Benteke is challenging, it comes down to Gallagher and he's in the space there. He's already waiting in the space just behind where Otten Edward and Kristen Benteke were operating. And Zahar was there a lot too, who scored the other goal for Palace. And they're just waiting to pick up those second balls because they know that Benteke and Edward are just going to cause a lot of problems for defenders. So Palace was superb in this game. Conor Gallagher, we talked about him a lot this season on the breakdown, a real rising talent for the England under 21 team. He's on loan from Chelsea at Crystal Palace, and he was pretty much prime Frank Lampard and Steven Gerrard rolled into one in this uh, game. Another superb display from the attacking midfielder. But for me, this is about Palace being more adventurous from the start, playing two out-and-out -out strikers in Benteke and Edouard, who dragged the Wolves' defence around, and that created a lot of space for the likes of Zahar and Gallagher, who are really good getting on the ball and driving into the box. This brought out the best in them, brought out the best in Crystal Palace, and what a great start to the season they're having under new manager, Patrick Vieira. Okay, finally, we're gonna focus on new look Tottenham under Antonio Conte. And I can already see this, these tactics for Conte are already visible against Everton early on. There's those new tactical changes are already becoming clear and Conte hasn't had a lot of time to work with Tottenham. Well, there's blighted Everton so far this season. 
And also maybe the way tactically they set up against Wolves in the first half at Molyneux on Monday when Wolves overran them in midfield. Nicely done by Harry Kane. Reguilon with the cross, Emerson Royale closing in. Should do better. Okay, then this game wasn't pretty at all, but Antonio Conte said he was happy enough of a point, even though he usually wouldn't be, but it gives him a good platform, Tottenham, after that shutout, nil-nil draw at Everton. So here's why I think he's going to be happy. He pointed out uh, some tactical things that worked well after one day on the training ground. If we roll the clip here, you can see one passage of play in the first half where Tottenham created two chances, where I really think underlines the work Conte's already been doing on the training ground. So you can see Tottenham building an attack. Uh, it goes out to the left, obviously Harry Kane dropping deep. And if we stop it right here, Sergio Reguilón in a 3-5-2 formation, he's the left wing back, suits him really well. He's got a lot of space, he's very advanced. He gets his head up. And who is that of his hand up on the other side of the pitch on the far right hand corner, at the bottom corner there? That's Emerson Royale. That is the right wing back. So both wing backs are high up, they're pinning the opponents back. Everton's wingers are back defended in their own box. They do not want to be doing that. Uh, and Reguilón crosses it in, and you can see Emerson Morales has been told to get in the box. He, he should finish that from that situation. He kind of backs out of the header. He's not used to being in the final third, I don't think. That will come with time, uh, but he should score. And this kind of showcased to me that the few things that Conte has been working on in the 3-5-2 formation, they're starting to come into fruition already for Tottenham, and he hasn't had that long on the training ground to work out these kings. We're heading towards one additional minute at the end of the first half. There's Son. Now Harry Kane, who hasn't had too much to go at as of yet. He drives that ball in and it's over the top from Reguilon. Top and we're almost in. The next chance that comes up for Spurs. Uh, once again, Harry Kane is involved. It's going to be really interesting to see how he's involved uh, under Conte and drops a little bit deeper into those half spaces and, and those gaps to create. Um, and you can see here, he gets the ball. Stop it here. Emerson Morale, he's on his bike. He's already overlapping Harry Kane on the right. So he gets wide, creates some space. Kane then whips in a delicious ball to the back stick. Who's there? Sergio Reguilón, the other Spurs wing back. So again, both wing backs could have scored. I think he has to score, really. This is a great opportunity. Not that difficult of a chance. Puts it off target, but you can already see that Spurs' players are starting to understand Antonio Conte's tactics. Like I said, only really have one session with them before this game. They looked more solid defensively. Everton were decent and probably should have won this game, but there were a few flashes here uh, for Conte at Tottenham to show that his methods are working. They are going to work with this team. I think it really bodes well that even early on, we're starting to see some of these patterns of play developing where Tottenham are getting the ball wide, the other wing backs coming in. We saw it at Chelsea, into Milan, with Italy in the past. This is the way Conte likes to play. He's an intense bloke. He went through the full range of emotions uh, on the sidelines at Goodison Park. He looked absolutely shattered at the full-time whistle. But now he's got a few weeks of the international break to bed in more of his ideas. And the key here is going to be Spurs staying solid defensively, getting Harry Kane more involved in creating, and then getting the wing backs wide, whipping in crosses so Kane, Son, or even the other wing back could finish off the chances. So I think this is quite promising for Tottenham, a great hire to get Antonio Conte in, and he's already shown his class as a serial winner, and hopefully Spurs, wow, they'll hope that continues in North London this time around. Okay, that does it for the breakdown this week. Thanks so much for joining me. Remember, hit me up on Twitter, at JPW underscore NBC Sports. Love digging a bit deeper on this analysis. If you've got any plays you want me to focus on, send them to me. I love doing this. Uh, loved having you on the breakdown this week and we'll speak to you all very soon indeed. Thanks, guys. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.